we can find an orthogonal basis for a two-dimensional subspace. But what can we do if we want to find an orthogonal basis for a three-dimensional subspace or four-dimensional subspace? The gram smith procedure will tell us what to do. We can build an orthogonal basis for any subspace we like. So, what is the idea? We start with three vectors x1, x2, x3, which are not orthogonal, and we want to form an orthogonal basis. In the first step, we choose some v1, and then we compute v2 such that v2 is orthogonal to v1. And we know already how to do that. And then in the next step, we compute a v3, which is orthogonal to both v1 and v2. And we can do this. We can take v3 equals x3 minus x3 hat, so the z again. And we can compute this due to the fact that v1 and v2 are already orthogonal to each other. We need v1 and v2 to be orthogonal in order to compute v3. However, in the previous step, we have already made sure that v1 and v2 are orthogonal to each other. And that's why this whole procedure is working. In the next step, so if we compute, for example, v4, we need v1, v2, and v3. We need all the other ones. So that's how the Gumpsmith procedure works. You take one, the second one is easy, and then for the third one, you need the first two. Etc. Etc. Let's do the computation in an example. We have x1, x2, and x3, and then we can pick one as our v1. Yeah, and then you have to realize that actually teachers are not so bad. So if we make some exercise like this, we've usually made it such that if you pick x1 as your v1, that the computation do not become so hard. If you pick one of the others, you can do the same computations, but we didn't try. It can be that the computations become horrendous. So keep that in mind. Of course, if you have, to have a practical problem where you have just three factors, then this won't occur. But if it's a problem designed by your teacher, then probably it's best to take just x1 as the v1. That's how exercise was more or less intended. So, one, zero, one, two, for our v1. Then compute v2 equals x2 minus projection of x2 on v1. So x2 minus 3 to 1, 4. x2 in v1 minus 3 plus 1 minus 2 plus 8 equals 6 over v1 in v1. 1 plus 1 plus 4 equals 6 times v1. And lo and behold, we get a 6 over 6. What a coincidence! Well, that's of course because the exercise was designed in order to get more or less ma nice numbers. Uh, so we get v2 equals minus 4202. But now, just think for a moment. For a basis vector, it doesn't matter what the length is. If 1, 0 is a basis vector, 2, 0 is a basis vector as well. So here you can also choose another basis vector, which is minus 2, 1, 0, 1, half the length. And that makes further computations probably a bit easier. You have to work with numbers which are a bit smaller. So in this step, I would advise to choose a v2 prime, which is a bit shorter. Then compute v3. v3 is the projection of x3, x3 hat on v1 and v2. So we have v3 equals x3 minus this projection over here. Here we have our x3, 0, 1, 0, 1. x3 in v1, so 0, 1, 0, 1 in v1 yields 0, 0, 0, 2, so 2 over 6, 6 as before. x3 in v2, so 0, 1, 0, 1 in uh, v2, or take v2 prime here, we get a 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 equals 2 over 6 times v2 prime minus 2, 1, 0. So twice of one third looks not so nice, but trust me, it could have been far worse. They are now both one third. So add them all up, we get a one third minus uh, uh, two times one third, so minus two thirds yields a minus one third with additional minus sign plus one third. Here we have zero uh, 
a plus one third with a minus sign, one minus one third equals two over three. Here you have a one over three plus zero, so zero minus one over three. And last term, one over three times two equals two over three plus one over three equals one, one minus one equals zero. So there we have our V3. And then, of course, uh, I would al always take the V3 prime, factor out a factor of three, one, two, minus one, zero over here. And there we have our new basis, B prime. Well, we have done quite a lot of computations, so to be sure, always check whether your resulting basis is indeed orthogonal. In a product of the first two, minus two plus zero plus zero plus two equals zero. Okay, one and three. 1 plus 0 minus 1 plus 0 equals 0. Okay as well. And this one, minus 2 plus 2 equals 0, plus 0 plus 0 equals 0. Equals 0 as well. Indeed, we have an orthogonal basis.